Angler X on the spot. Look at this! Oh, she put up such a fight! <laughs> Beautiful crappie. Best fish of the day. It's another really nice fish. I'd have a salmon on here. Big fish. Oh my gosh. Look at that bird. Angler X. Honest, informative, real multi species angling. What's up, everybody, and welcome to another Angler X video. In this week's video, we're going to be doing some frog fishing, but first, I need to let you know that I'm going to be taking a little bit of break from making videos for a couple months and get back at it after that. I am going to keep recording. But there's so much going on this summer, and I just want to get caught up on some projects, do some bass tournaments, and do a little bit of vacationing. Rest assured, I'm going to keep on recording, and I'll have some great new footage to bring to you in a couple of months. But I am going to leave you with some frog fishing, and uh, I'm going to give you some tips on frog fishing, because that's what I'm going to be doing a lot of this summer. Now when it comes down to the frogs themselves, I always use Booyah frogs. They're fairly inexpensive. And when you're fishing the river, you're going to lose a lot of frogs to, to pike. They damage them. There's also dogfish. And you go through a lot of frogs. So the Booyah is very economical. Don't spend a lot of money on frogs because it's just not worth it. And when it, kind of, when it comes down to color a frog, it really comes down to what's on the bottom of the frog. When you go into the store, you're looking at the packages, all they show you is the front because they're trying to catch the fishermen. Now this, all this pattern, all this fancy stuff on top, that doesn't matter. The fish see the bottom of the frog, so I always use, I always have one frog that's white on the bottom and I always have one frog that's black on the bottom. And I really like the black. I tend to use black more than anything and have great luck on that. When it comes to rods, I use a heavy or medium heavy rod. This one is a medium heavy. It's a Fenwick Eagle rod. It's actually really stiff for a medium heavy and it works great. It's a seven foot rod and it really works great for frogging. And then a high retrieval reel. This is a, a Tatula from, from Daiwa. It's a 7.3 retrieval rate. You want a really high retrieval rate to get those fish up and out of the weeds. Now when we start cast in this I'm gonna bring you some footage hopefully the fish are biting but the technique we're gonna do is we're looking for mat with open areas in the mat and that's where those fish are gonna be hanging out is on those edges of the open areas and we're gonna cast out and bring it through those areas very slowly now if we're searching for fish we really want to work that bait fast and just look for blow-ups and, and cover water but once we know where those fish are we want to slow that bait way down and what we're doing is we're watching that frog as it's coming across and we're paying attention to any kind of movement underneath that frog. Now that fish might come up and, and hit the frog and miss it. So it's very important that you keep an eye on that frog and after the strike, if that frog is still sitting there, you do not want to set the hook or try to jerk it. So my rule of thumb is watch that frog very closely as it's coming across Count to two after the hit, and if that frog is still sitting there, give it just a couple of small jerks in place. You don't have to advance it forward, just give it a couple jerks in place. Because if that fish missed it, it's probably still looking for it. And a lot of times that fish will hit that frog again. Give it two seconds, and if you don't see that frog on the surface, now it's time to set the hook. And a lot of times you can see that line moving if that, if that fish has that frog in its mouth. As far as the line goes, I do use a heavy braid, a 50 pound braid, 40 pound braid. And then uh, when you set your drag on your reel, you want to crank that drag down so you get zero slippage on the drag. Uh, with those tips, I think you're going to catch a lot more bass on frogs. Now let's get to it and see if we can catch a few. You can hear the frogs croaking. Got some great heavy, heavy weed cover here with some open areas in between. This is perfect stuff right here. It's perfect time of day. No wind. 
conditions are just perfect. We should be able to put a couple fish in the boat here. I'm just going to kind of work it a little bit faster till I can locate a fish. Or two. It seems like when you find fish, they'll be in groups. There'll be small groups of fish in some of these open areas. But you just got to kind of focus on those areas. And if you start to find some fish, you know, expand your search. Start fan casting around the whole area. And hopefully you'll start to contact a few fish. It's really heavy cover. I'm just going to bring it through a moderate pace. There's a good bite. He missed it. Got him. Got him. You see how he missed it and then he came back for it because I didn't jerk it out of there. It's a good fish. Oh, that's a pig. Get in the boat. Oh, that's a pig. Look at that. Oh, look at that fish. He just choked that frog. Oh my gosh, look at that bass. <laughs> look at that fish. That is how you catch a frog bass. That was so textbook. I was bringing it across there. He just blew up underneath it. Missed it completely. I did not jerk it out of there. That's very important. And then just gave her a couple more bumps and he hammered it. That's a giant. It's a giant Mississippi River bass. That's what we came out here to do. Yes. Oh, he missed it. So I just missed a fish. I'm going to bring it right across the exact same spot and see if I can get this fish to hit again. I'm coming up on the spot right now. Got him. Another tank. So I guess that I guess that's a good uh, lesson there. If you do miss, you know, a, a good follow-up is get that frog right back in there, bring it right across, bring it right across the exact same blow-up hole. And if they're aggressive, they'll hit it again. If they don't hit it, you may want to follow up with a, a worm or some sort of punching rig and drop it right into that hole. But a lot of times they're going to hit it again if they miss it. Here we go. Another fish out of that little pocket in there. You can see the opening right there. Got all this really thick weed all around. And you see there's some openings and that's where those fish are hanging out. It takes a lot of discipline to not set the hook when you get bit. You gotta give it time. I gotta tell myself that all the time. It's so hard not to just reef into them. But there is no hurry to set that hook. They will grab that frog and they will hold on for several seconds.
Dang, missed him. See, I didn't take my own advice there. You can see the blow up hole right there. I'll bring it right over that same hole. A foot away. Here I come right up on it. If fish was aggressive, he should hit again. That was right over the top of the original hole. Now I'm just going to try just a little bit to the left. See if that fish relocated just slightly. And then I'll go just to the right. Another thing you can do is, if you think it's a good fish, give it some time and come back to that fish. And a lot of times they'll reposition, they'll get settled down and they'll hit again. But I made a mistake there. That was a big mistake. I should not have jerked it on the first hit because you saw him swat again and the frog was long gone by then. And now I, I'm without that fish because of that. It's just, in, it's just so reactionary. You just gotta resist that temptation. Just gotta keep telling yourself to wait. Wait, 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 wait. There one just kind of rolled under it there. Uh, I didn't, there he hit it. Yeah. See how I waited on that? It's just a small fish, but. That fish hit, missed. Waited, popped it just a little bit, he hit it. I paused and set the hook. I actually even felt him pulling on it a little bit. So you can see we have some nice weeds, really thick duckweed and slime, and then a little bit of open area in between. These are the kind of areas that you're gonna find these bass. And I should add that you do want current. You do want current nearby. It's very critical on, on the Mississippi River that current is involved with your weeds. If it's dead water, you might as well forget it. There's a fish, got it. Ooh. Missed him. I'm gonna get right back in there. Right back in that same blowhole. There he's under it. He just rolled under it. I'm gonna give it just a little twitch. Oh, you see that? He completely missed it. He knows it's up there. There, he, he missed it again. There, I got him. See how I patiently worked that? If I would have jerked that frog out of there, I might not have got that fish. But he was so active and he just kept searching for that bait. It had as long as it was there and he could, he could feel it moving around, he was gonna get it. Beautiful. This one just like that go oh, nice bass 
Yes, get out and do some summer frogging on the Mississippi River. You won't regret it. Follow these tips. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Thanks for watching.